Hello. In this video, I will show you what's new in Autodex 5.3. Actually, we will join all the new stuff that was introduced from 5.1, which was the latest video we created. So, here we see all the major new things and changes in versions 5.2, 5.2.1, and the latest one, 5.3, that was just released. So, uh, the first major upgrade in 5.2 a few months ago was support for Inventor uh, 2023. Uh, that includes the new Inventor functionality that's called Mark Feature. Mark Features are engravings in form of geometry or text that you can put on, on also on sheet metal parts. And they are now properly handled by AutoDXF. If I run it, you will notice that there's a new checkbox in Layers tab that says Export Mark Feature Layers. What this basically means is if this is checked, all the Mark Layers will be exported to the XF files. The Mark Layers are handled a bit differently, uh, contrary to all the other layers that are listed here. They are accessible through Inventor Manage and Styles editor. So if I just quickly show you an example, here is a sheet metal part. If I open styles editor, I will see a new option here mark and all the layers are listed here. So all the layers you have here and that are actually used in the part will be exported to DXF if the checkbox mentioned before is checked. So this is a bit different uh, compared to add all other layers. So that's the first upgrade. The second one that's also related to Inventor 23 is another option to approximate splines. Uh, Inventor 23 introduces the new possibility to approximate splines not only by linear segments but also with arc segments. So this is a new option that will enable you to approximate your spline geometry with arc geometry. Another new one that is also a customer, a few customers request that we have ability to position AutoDXF text using a point. Uh, until now there was only an option to place AutoDXF text somewhere in the middle of the of the sheet metal part that was sometimes not a very appropriate location. Uh, now you can fine-tune the location of the text by creating a sketch uh, on flat pattern and the point on that sketch will be used as a placing position for text. In addition, you can also set that the text will be placed in a single line instead or in, uh, instead of a paragraph. If this one is checked, all the properties will be listed in one line and this will be the separator between them that is used that you can customize to your needs. So let's see how this works. I have here, uh, let's say that I want to place thickness and part number as a text in my export DXF files. I also want to include it on a specific point. Let's say this is my attachment point. This is just a detail on uh, which point is the attachment point of the, of the text box and I want to that it's written in a one line. So let's see how this works. Well, of course I have to prepare a part first. So I will open this one and activate its flat pattern and let's say I want to place my uh, description here somewhere. I will just put a sketch here and this sketch just needs to contain one point. This is the point. I can also dimension its location if it's needed. And that's everything I need. I just make have to make sure that this is a visible unconsumed sketch. I'll just save this one and jump back to AutoDXF and do a quick search of my sheet metal parts. And we will we will just select the the purple one that now includes the the point. 
is here. Just deselect all and select this one. Uh, and also you have to make sure that this layer unconsumed sketches is visible because the point here is actually used for placing the text. So this one has to be visible and this has to be checked and also single line if you wish. So now I'll just export this. Let me just set the folder. I will use just this one. So let's export. It's only one file and we will open it in AutoCAD. I will, I will now switch to AutoCAD and open this file. So this is the one. Uh, you will notice that the text is now placed in this in this point and it's also written in, in one line. So that was an improvement. It's a combination of few improvements in 5.2 and 5.2.1. Uh, there's a, also another one. I can show it here actually. Uh, you will notice that we, we have an abil the ability to write bending information on band lines and also at the same time band lines can be shown instead of entire line just with short lines at the end of the bands and now we have ability to put the text the information text above those short band marks instead somewhere in the middle of the of the band line if you wish to achieve this uh, you will have to you will have to make a selection here you'll find it under band marks uh, it's this checkbox info over mark so basically if this is checked the band information will be shown as on my example if this is not checked, bending information will be placed somewhere in the middle of the band line. This is also another small improvement. Also another one, uh, we have here now option to define what's written as bending information. If I switch back to my export DXF file, you can see that now I have actually written angle, the direction and the radius separated with dashes. If you want to write this in some other way, you can define the, the, the scheme using few attributes that are available. Let's go back to AutoDXF. These are the available attributes ink, dir and rate. This one represents angle, bending angle. This is bending direction and this is uh, bending, bending radius. This R here is just a fixed text. So let's say, for example, that you don't want, um, I don't know, radius. I can just delete this. And I don't know, I, maybe I want here slash instead of uh, minus sign. So if I would export DXF now, I would just get the angle 90 slash down or up. So this is another improvement. If you want to reset to default, just click this reset and you will get all the attributes with the default information scheme. So let's go on. Now I'll actually move to 5.3. Those, those are mostly the new or improved features in 5.2. Let's move to 5.3 now. Uh, if I go back to my initial screen where we search the sheet metal parts, you will see that there is a new field here. It's called filter box, filter field, and it's used for quickly finding the components. Uh, this is also a customer request. Actually, they wanted to select all the parts that have a specific text or string in their name or some other property. Default, the filtering works by name column. So let's, let's say I want to select all the parts that have tank in their file name. I will just enter tank here, click this filter button and all the parts, the sheet metal parts that have tank in their name are now selected. You can group them quickly by clicking select. Now they're at the end. If I click this again, they will be at the beginning. So these are all, all the parts with tank in their name. So if I click export now, for example, only those will be exported. If you want to filter by another property, let's say by material, you have to click that column and header in advance. So I click this material material header, header, so it gets this 
a small triangle here and now this will search by this selected column let's say i want to find everything that has i don't know uh, let's say stahl in its name so stahl filter and if i scroll down you will see that only those two are now selected but i can still group them at the beginning if needed and that's how it works you can reset this if you delete this and click again or by those uh, buttons that select everything or nothing in addition to this there is another sm small improvement you can now select by using shift button let's say i click this one now i press shift on my keyboard and click this one you will see that all the sheet metal parts in between are also selected so it behaves similar as selecting files in your file explorer this is it regarding the finding and filtering the parts. Uh, another one is regarding the layers. There was a big change here. Uh, we now have separate layers for two additional objects. And those are thread points and small holes points. Those are objects, in points in both cases, that can be placed in the center of threaded holes or in the center of small holes. What this means, if I go to DXF settings here, uh, I can select now that Auto DXF can automatically detect threaded, threaded holes, tapped holes. They can be placed on a separate layer, but now in addition to this, uh, also the thread centers, point in the thread centers can be created and placed on a separate layer. So you can only get those on your DXF files. Uh, that's useful if you want to create thread holes not by lustre cutting but with some other procedure. So this is for threads and very, very similar it's also for the small holes. Let me show you how this works. Let's say I want to I want to create only points in instead of small holes. I will go to layers. I will keep the layers for threads and thread points visible but I will turn off the layer for small holes. It means that this means that this layer will be switched off. So when it gets to your laser software, those circles actually won't be visible, but you will only get points in the center of small circles. It's optional. You can put it you can you can leave it visible if you want. I will leave it visible for threads. Let's close this for a moment. Uh, meanwhile meanwhile I have created uh, features that we need for this demonstration. These are four small holes and these are four threaded holes. So let me switch back to Auto DXF and we will just select this purple part again. This is the one, just select all and select this one and we will export it with the settings that we just created. And again, see the, see the result in AutoCAD. So let's open it. This is the latest one with threads and small holes. Uh, you will notice here that if we look at the small holes first, we only get the points visible. If I click it, you will notice that they are placed on AutoDXF small holes points layer. This one is also present, but it's turned off. I can turn it on if needed. So those are the, those are the actual circles of the holes. So in this way you have a great flexibility of how to handle this creation of these features. On the other hand, I have threads here. Uh, for this example, we, we left the thread circles active. So now we have bo both layers visible here, the threads themselves and also their center points in AutoDXF thread points layer. Of course, the layer names, colors uh, are also configurable in layer step of AutoDXF. There is also an improvement in auto flip functionality of AutoDXF. That's the, that's the command that automatically flips all the flat patterns in such a way that ma majority of the bands are in up or also in down direction in this latest release. Until now there was only an option to flip in such a way that majority of the, ba of the bands were in the up direction. Now we have added a checkbox here that enables you to reverse the logic. So basically, if this is checked, 
auto flip will flip the, all the sheet metal flat patterns in such a way that majority of the bands will be in the down direction. How this works, if I click it, it will analyze all the sheet metal flat patterns and flip them in such a way that the majority of the bands are in desired direction. So this is another one and also this one here. Under layers we have a new option, set DXF objects colors directly. What this means, there were some there were some issues with compatibility of DXF files with some plasma and laser cutter software. Uh, because some softwares require that the colors of the object are set directly on the objects themselves and not by layer, as it was default before. If this checkbox is not selected, AutoDXF will create DXF files as it did until now. So what this means, if you open, let me just go back to AutoCAD to show you what I mean. Up until now, if you picked an object and checked it, its color, it was, also, it was always set by layer. This means that the color of the object is controlled by its layer color. But now, if the mentioned checkbox is selected, you will get the colors directly on the objects themselves. So let me select this polyline that represents the out, outside contour. You will see that its color is not by layer, but it's actually blue. The same goes, for example, for this band mark. It's color 100. Uh, we have found out that some laser software requires the exact colors of specific objects to work, so this should be a fix for those situations. Let me just switch back to Inventor and also DXF. Last but not least, a new improvement. The position and the size of this dialog will be remembered for next session. So if I place it here and close it and then run uh, out the XF again, it will appear on the exact same location. Uh, if anything goes wrong, for example, if for some reason this stays on some other screen that's not available anymore, it shouldn't, but it maybe could, you can always press F11 on your keyboard and this will reset the position and the size of the window to the default uh, setting. So, this is it. Uh, you can find all the information about AutoDXF, demo version, purchasing a full version, access to help, and everything related on AutoDXF website here. If you need any additional information, we are always available on this email. And if it's more convenient for you, you can also find the software, the trial version on Autodesk Store. It's exactly the same version as on our website, but its distribution is, distribution is a bit different. So, thank you for using or trying out AutoDXF. Please let us know if you need any additional information regarding the software. Thanks again and have a nice day.